So, you got a client contract. Congratulations! Now, what are the next steps after this? You need to prepare yourself and write down what are you going to do when you go and perform your first visit to the client's organization. I prepared for you a list with 20 checkpoints to help you with your preparation task. Penetration testing is the process of assessing the security model of an organization. Am I right? So before starting a project, you should gather information about the company that is going to be tested. Usually, organizations have official websites. You as a tester should use the company's website as a main source of information. Gathering this type of information will give you an in-depth understanding of the company. So what you should be looking for is first check the foundation of the company. Next, list the objectives of the organization. Also, check if they have products released. A good idea is to search for some employee details and try to identify stakeholders too. And don't forget the IT administrator. Next, look for some potential business partners. And finally, see what kind of clients the company have. You as a tester should visit the client organization's premises. This visit should involve the basic facilities like parking areas, restaurants, restrooms, elevators, etc. Also, you need to examine the network equipment room where the routing setup is secured and determine whether the room is provided with sufficient security. Then, check the server room if it's different from the network equipment room, of course, and determine whether the room is provided with sufficient security too. Next, the team needs to gather the contact details of key personnel and the emergency personnel who will be appointed as being in charge of the project. The details should include the name of the employee, the employee department, his role, his mobile or office number, and finally his email address. After that, inspect the area where the testing team will work and choose a location that is near to the network equipment room. The location should have easy access to restrooms and should have restricted access to other employees of the client organization. After choosing the physical location, obtain temporary identification cards for the team. Next, the client needs to prepare for you domain accounts with limited end administrator access in order to use them while doing the internal network tests. Next, you should ask for previous security reports in order to give a clear idea of past problems. Then, the team should check the reports for the compliance with the test. The previous penetration testers group, do they have a good reputation? And when the test was carried out? Your clients are different. A bank business is not like an e-commerce business, for example. Uh, banks have more restricted regulations that you should take into consideration. So what you should be looking for? Every company should maintain physical safeguards such as providing security through access cards and having guards on duty. They should have also technical security mechanisms and, of course, company's standards. Next, ask the client for a list of servers 
operating systems and network devices. An important thing to do is to hire a lawyer. Your team should have a lawyer who understands technology and related matters. A legal document related to the penetration testing needs to be signed before starting the penetration testing process. After getting the legal document from the client, the team should study it with the help of a lawyer. This document contains information related to legal aspects of testing and the scope of the project. A non-disclosure agreement or NDA, also known as a confidential disclosure agreement, is a legal contract that protects the client's sensitive data. A typical NDA, which after reviewed by a lawyer, specifies all the information that you are not allowed to disclose to other parties. The team should get a liability insurance from a local insurance company in order to protect the team's interest if the client files a lawsuit caused by a damage during the course of a penetration test. After that, the team must prepare a budget for the entire process of penetration testing. The main purpose of this budget is to estimate the overall expenses required for the project. The list of the expenses that the budget may include is the traveling expenses, for example, the logic expenses, and the food expenses. The time scale is the time it takes the organization to carry out its operation. Testers should be flexible about their timing, so the testing process does not affect the organization. Negotiate your daily or hourly fees with your client. Don't surprise them at a later stage. Next, draft a timeline for the project. This timeline draft should include the starting time of the project, the project milestones, and the project completion estimated date. Then, you need to prepare a quote that contains the details of services that will be provided to the client organization. Next, you need to show to the client the workflow that you are going to proceed with, which includes the steps and the tools any software or any special equipment that will be used. List the tests not to be carried out, example a denial of service. Imagine the impact of a denial of service attack if your client is an e-commerce company. After you finish all these discussions, you should be able to prepare a detailed document that includes all the agreed points and sign it with the client. Finally, identify how your final penetration testing report will be delivered. This report should be written in the same order in which the facts were developed during the penetration test. The detailed report should contain vulnerabilities in the organization. By displaying the low, medium, and high-ranking vulnerabilities, the countermeasures and the recommendations to be taken to reduce those vulnerabilities, and finally, a summary section.